Welcome and thank you for watching this video. I am Agnese and I will present you our polynomial time algorithm for solving the hidden subset sum problem. This is a joint work with Jean-Sébastien Coron. Well, our main goal is to solve the hidden subset sum problem, so let me introduce it first. The hidden subset sum problem is closely related to the subset sum problem, which has been widely studied during these years. And Essentially, in the subset sum problem, we have an integer h and a set of integers alpha 1, alpha n. And we know that h is the sum of a subset of these integers. The problem then is to identify such subset. Well, usually, uh, this problem is formul formulated by using binary coefficients in the sum in this way that you can see in this slide, that the problem becomes to determine such binary coefficients given h and the weights alpha i's. In the hidden subset sum problem, we have many subset sums respect to the same weights alpha i's, and the problem is given the, these sums h1, hm, to recover both the binary coefficients and the weights. So in this case, in the hidden subset sum problem, the weights are hidden too. And notice that this fact implies that the standard lattice attacks for the subset sum problem are not applicable in this case. In general, it is convenient to state this problem in a more compact manner. Indeed, we can re rewrite this modular system using uh, vectors in this way and then more formally in the hidden subset, subset sum problem we consider n integers alpha 1 alpha n defined mod q and n binary vectors x1 xn uh, which have length m we call then h the samples vector satisfying then this vectorial equation and the problem is the following, given the modulus q and the samples vector h to recover either the hidden weights alpha i's and the binary vector x i's. In this talk, I will usually consider uh, the vectors as row vectors and uh, denote by capital X the matrix whose rows are the x i's. Then x is a binary matrix. A bit of history. Uh, well, at Eurogroup 98, Boyko, Penadon and Magantazen presented a fast generator of DLP random pairs whose security uh, relies on the hardness of the hidden subset sum problem. And during the following year at Crypto, Crypto 99, Guyen and Stern described a lattice-based algorithm for solving the hidden subset sum problem and also its impact on cryptography. Uh, well, despite for small n their algorithm is efficient, they were not capable to break the problem for n greater than 90. Then in our paper we provide a rigorous analysis of their algorithm and we justify such practical behavior. In addition, we provide a variant of the Nguyen-Stern algorithm which works in heuristic polynomial time. So, in this talk I will First, present the Dengian's turn attack. Secondly, I will describe our algorithm for solving the hidden subset sum problem. Then, I will also introduce the affine variant of the hidden subset sum problem, which has some cryptographic applications. And I will explain how both the algorithms, ours and the Nguyen's turn algorithm, are applicable to this variant too. And finally, I will conclude with some final remarks and open questions. So, let's describe the Nguyen's turn attack. Remember that as input, we have only the modulus and the samples vector h. And we want to recover the hidden weights alpha and the binary vector x size. And we also know that, know that this equation in the box relates them. The nice idea behind the Nguyen's turn attack is the following then. If a vector u is orthogonal to h mod q, using this equation 
we have that the vector of projections PU, which uh, you, it is defined in this light, must be in the orthogonal to alpha mod Q. Well, then clearly if PU is shorter than the shortest vector of such lattice, the lattice of vectors orthogonal to alpha mod Q, then PU must be zero, but PU equal to zero implies, I mean, it is equivalent to U orthogonal to the lattice generated by the excise, by the binary vectors. So, in other words, if Q it is, is sufficiently large, it is possible to recover the orthogonal of the lattice generated by the excise from the lattice of vectors orthogonal to H mod Q, and H and Q are the inputs of the algorithm. So this was the Gunstern idea using an orthogonal lattice attack to solve the hidden subset sum problem. So following this intuition, the Gunstern attack is divided into main steps, as first from H, this algorithm computes a metric C satisfying a similar equation, but the point is that C can be not binary. Then, in a second step from C, uh, it computes the binary matrix X and consequently the alpha, the vector containing the weights. So, more precisely, following the idea I just described, if LX is the lattice generated by the X size, the binary vectors, the first step of the algorithm computes the completion of LX, namely, uh, first computes the orthogonal lattice of LX from H and Q, and then it computes the orthogonal again of this lattice, finding the completion. So the matrix C is actually a basis of this lattice LX bar, which is an orthogonal orthogonal. Then uh, we have that LX is a four rank sub lattice of its completion and the X size are short. Thus, the second step uses a lattice reduction strategy to recover the X size. In our paper, we analyzed this algorithm. Regarding step one, well, we just say that step one of the Nguyen's turn attack recovers a basis of the completion when Q, the modulus, is sufficiently large. We rigorously proved that uh, with good probability this happens if the logarithm of the modulus is at least 2m n log m, where m is the number of samples and n is the number of weights, and also this happens in polynomial time. In the Nguyen's turn paper, the suggested number of samples is 2n, hence log linear in n, in which, in our paper, we proved that this is optimal, this value is optimal in terms of complexity. We also observed that, heuristically, the minimal subset sum density for which the attack is polynomial can be actually dropped to 1 over n. Regarding the second step, uh, in our paper we describe a simple model showing that the x size are very short vectors of LX, and for this reason, in order to recover them, one has to use BKZ with very large block size. So, this implies that the asymptotical time complexity cannot be uh, polynomial, and uh, you can read the in this slide the expected time complexity. So, the bottleneck of the Nguyen's turn attack is the second step. And the reason is that it is used a lattice reduction algorithm to find uh, very short vectors. In our paper, we solved this issue in introducing a new approach. Okay, let's see our polynomial time algorithm. Well, our attack is a variant of the attack I've just uh, discussed in Gigi. We have the same overall structure in two steps, but our second step is completely different as it doesn't involve any notion of lattice reduction. Well, 
However, to obtain a polynomial time complexity, uh, we require the length of the input vector h, um, which is the number of samples m, to be quadratic in n uh, instead of linear as in the Nguyen's turn attack. Uh, and I will explain um, why later. So, our algorithm has two steps as the previous one. The first one is actually an improvement of the Nguyen's turn. Uh, first step. Um, more specifically, uh, m is larger, then we need to generate more orthogonal vectors. And in the paper, we describe a method to do it with the same asymptotic cost. The second step is an algorithm to recover binary vectors using a multivariate approach. So, in our second step, we don't use a lattice reduction, but we use a multivariate approach to uh, find the x size. In the next slides I will describe the idea of our second step and uh, I invite you to read the full version of the paper for all the details of the algorithm. Okay, let's describe now our new second step with a multivariate approach. There are two crucial observations. The first is that Lx is a full rank sublattice of its completion. Then there exists an integer invaluable matrix W uh, such that X is equal to WC. Uh, remember that C is the output of the first step, is a basis, it's a basis of the completion. The latter observation is that being binary is an algebraic condition. And here I mean that a number is zero or one if and only if it satisfies this quadratic equation. Now we have to mix these two ingredients. So each xi, each binary vector, is the product of a row of w, that here it is denoted by wi, and the matrix C. More precisely, the jth component of xi, which is xij, is wi times the jth column of C. And since xjj is also binary, uh, it must satisfy the quadratic equation which was in the previous slide. So this implies that for each column of C, we have a quadratic equation in the components of Wi. Therefore, the rows of W are solutions of this multivariate quadratic polynomial system with n variables and m equations m like number of samples and n like the number of hidden weights. And this leads us to the condition n quadratic in m. And uh, well, before explaining why, before explaining this last statement, uh, I just want to underline that uh, what follows also implies that uh, it isn't necessary to work with uh, the system explicitly. We never have to write uh, the, the system with the variables in our algorithm. Indeed, the coefficients of the monomials of this system depend only on C. As we can construct first the matrix R corresponding to the coefficients of the monomials of degree 2, subsequently, augmenting it by minus C, we obtain a matrix E, uh, which is the matrix of the coefficients of the full system. In this way, we obtain a representation of the system from C directly. And the key point is that from such representation, we can compute the target vectors via linear algebra, by using linear algebra only. In fact, in the paper, we describe a method to recover the rows of W computing uh, eigenspaces of certain submatrices of uh, a specific basis of the kernel of E. This is a bit technical, but all the details are in the paper. The important fact is that in our second step, we just use linear algebra to output the target vectors. Moreover, uh, using the notation that um, is introduced in this slide, we can finally state the rigorous condition under which this strategy, this second step, succeeds. Namely, 
if the matrix R of the degree 2 coefficients s rank n squared plus n over 2, then the vectors x size, the binary vectors, can be recovered in n to the power of 6 oper arithmetic operations. And notice that this hypothesis can be verified only if m is greater than n squared plus n over 2. And here is where the condition m quadratic in n comes. Well, in practice, uh, it is convenient to work model small odd primes since x is binary, and we observe that uh, p equal to t is always sufficient. Moreover, um, we notice that heuristically this condition is always verified for m appro approximately n squared plus n over 2, and this holds also mod 3. And uh, for this reason, we expect to recover the x size for such value of m. And this explains why for m quadratic in n we have a heuristic polynomial time algorithm. So, summarizing, we presented both the Nguyenstern algorithm and our variant. In the second step, we used a multivariate approach instead of a lattice reduction, and thanks to this new approach, we obtain a polynomial algorithm when the number of samples is quadratic in n. Nevertheless, with our improved step 1, we don't have to increase the size of the modulus, neither uh, the asymptotic time complexity of the first step changes. And actually, in our algorithm, the time complexity is dominated by the first step running time. We also perform some practical experiment uh, which confirmed these analyses. Before concluding, uh, I want to briefly present you also the affine variant of the hidden subset sum problem. Uh, the affine hidden subset sum problem is, as I said, a variant of the hidden subset sum problem um, having uh, cryptographic applications too, like the cryptanalysis of the DLP generator in the Schnorr signature. In the affine hidden subset sum problem, we have an additional input vector e and an additional hidden coefficient s, and we have this equation satisfied. So, in the Nguyenstein paper, it is observed that it is possible to modify the original attack in order to solve this further problem, and in particular, the modification is made in the first step and uh, so uh, the noise vector is involved only in this part of the algorithm. This implies that our second step is the applicable directly also to this variant and uh, in it, impl it implies also that uh, we obtain a polynomial time algorithm for this problem too. So, as a conclusion, in our paper, we analyzed the Nguyenstern attack for solving the hidden subset sum problem, and we argue that asymptotically uh, the Nguyenstern attack is not polynomial time, so it isn't polynomial time. Indeed, we identified the bottleneck and we proposed a new and completely different approach to recover the short binary vectors. Moreover, uh, we observe that uh, asymptotically the heuristic time complexity of our full algorithm is of the order of n to the power of 9. Well, the main open questions are if uh, it is possible to further reduce the number of samples and the size of the modules. Well, in the full version of the paper we provide two methods to slightly reduce m, however in both cases we still need a quadratic number of samples to have a polynomial running time. That's it, thank you for your attention and I encourage you to read the full version of the paper where you can find all the details and the results of the practical experiments and our code is also available online. Thank you again for watching this video and enjoy the conference.